When I was 19, um, that's when I met my trafficker. I was working as a cocktail waitress in Hamilton, and one of my coworkers, who was also a waitress, um, befriended me, and she was a cool girl. I thought that I finally could fit in, and I finally had someone that was paying attention to me and liked me, um, and it felt really nice. I did have a gut instinct, though, and there were red flags that I ignored. Um, so something, something felt really wrong when she was coming to pick me up for my dad's house and take me to that party. I just ignored it and we went back to her place and just slept that night. And in the morning, that's when things were off. It was assumed that she was gonna drive me back home. She drove me into a strip club parking lot. She told me that I owed her money from the club the night before, the cab ride the night before, and I didn't have it. She said, you're gonna work today um, and make me some money. Just kind of looked at her horrified and I think I chuckled a little bit because it just seemed, it just seemed unreal. Like me at a strip club, that's not gonna happen. But then she threatened my dad and my dog and she threatened that um, she would kill them. And I believed it. Prior, I met her friends, they had drugs and like guns that I saw and it was just, it seemed like she would do what she said and follow up with her threats. So I just complied. I went into the strip club thinking that if I work today, no one will have to know. Um, I can give her this money and I'll just go back home and everything will be totally fine. She took my IDs. Um, so I couldn't go anywhere. She took my bank card um, and my phone. So I had no access to a cell phone, um, but she would from time to time give me her phone and say, okay, call your dad. I would have to call him, pretend things were okay. She gave me this whole backstory of what I was doing and what I needed to say to him. And that was that. Sitting down, having drinks, and having that kind of relationship is what some of the Johns really liked from me. I would disclose things like, you know, my roommate is taking my money, you know? And I would say stuff like that because obviously I don't know I'm being human trafficked. I don't know what's going on. And they would say, she's your pimp. And I'm like, no, like pimps are those people with canes in movies. I just dismissed it, like you're crazy. And people would say this, all of the time like, that's your pimp um and so i just i was clueless i didn't have a phone this was kind of before everyone was googling everything and thought to google everything so um i just i wrote it off like oh no no i'm just i'm a stripper and i have a roommate that takes my money and so yeah i was given a quota each day so it was you're dropped off at the club and so I worked from open to close. So I think it was around like 11 a.m. to one in the morning, something like that. You're not coming home unless you make this money. And if you don't make this money, uh, you know, I'll either be you up, you get no food today or whatever it is. So you can't solely rely on $1,000 a day dancing. It's just a little crazy to me because when I first started, it was like the thought of being in a you know thong and bra was horrifying to me right but then you know the other strippers the other girls are offering you lines of coke you're getting drinks from your customers it starts to become a little bit easier and then you need to make more money for your pimp and that's how it escalates um, where eventually it's like having having sex for money is just as easy as like ordering a coffee, you know? It's just, you don't even bat an eye to it. They made me believe that they were the safe place and that ever, no one else had your interest in mind but them. 